What's up guys? Thank you for watching this video. Now, uh, this is going to be a follow-up video of the previous video I made about this drone. Uh, if you haven't watched the video, I would say um, go ahead and watch it and I will kind of give you a little bit of idea on what's going on on this video. I want to put a link for that video somewhere around here so you can check it out. It's not really a long video. I think that was part one and this is going to be part two. So where are we right now? So I did change my ESC. Uh, that is the ESC that pretty much have been giving me issue even before uh, the crash and before I end up getting the whole drone submerged in water. So I changed it uh, in case some of you ask. Uh, this is the Speedy B uh, 50 amp. I was using a Speedy B stack on, on this build. Now I keep the flight controller. The flight controller has no issue. The issue I was having was, was with the ESC and after uh, it take a plunge in the water, uh, ESC 4 stop working. I plug it in on BL, no actually I plug it in on BlueJ. That's a, a firmware I'm running on this ESC. I'm able to see ESC 1, 2, 3, but ESC 4 is completely non-existent. So, Switch it, and uh, the ES I'm using right now is the Mamba 50M BA8032. Uh, that's a ESC I had sitting around for some of my previous build. But uh, right now we just, we are ready to take it out for a spin. And so far on the bench, everything has been working good. Uh, the O3 air units working fine, uh, I'm able to connected to my Gago 2 and on the bench everything seems to be okay. I'm also able to plug it in and connect it to the DJI app. Uh, receiver is working pretty good too. Connect to the transmitter. Everything on the bench seems to be okay. And of course the flight controller also working fine. Was able to plug it in and connect to beta flight. And also my GPS seems to be working fine so far. Now I haven't got any satellite yet but i am inside my garage so i usually don't get any satellite so when we go outside we'll see we're able to actually get some satellite now uh, before the crash uh, this gps has been working pretty good i've been getting on average about 15 to 22 satellite and i usually get satellite lock pretty fast with this gps so uh, we're gonna see if we get any change in behavior as far the performance of the gps go right now we are ready to take it out for a spin but before I do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the frame I use on this build. So the frame I use for this build is the Impulse RC LR7. I'm going to give you my quick little opinion about this frame. And of course, uh, this is a 7-inch frame. But I would say this is not a real 7-inch frame. Hear me out on that. Uh, the reason I say it is not a real 7-inch frame is because this frame was not designed as a 7-inch. As the name say, this is an apex frame. Uh, the body or uh, the middle section of the frame is pretty much an apex. Uh, when I compare it to my uh, Evo 5, which is also an apex frame, there is no difference when it comes to the middle section. Uh, the one thing Ampos did, and I think they done it uh, a couple of times with the apex frame, they just uh, swap the arm uh, from a 5 inch arm to a 7 inch arm. And amazingly, they kept the same thickness of the arm. Uh, the thickness on the LR7 exactly the same thickness than on the Apex 5. So I think after the data, they were getting some uh, issue with vibration and resonance. So what they end up doing, they had this little side brace in order to take out the vibration. And I have to say that that worked pretty good. Uh, there is really no vibration or oscillation or resonance on this frame. Uh, matter of fact, I'm actually able to fly it with rock study on and I'm not getting any wobble on the video. Talking about that, there is a new version of this frame, uh, which is the Apex LR7 EVO. And that one is actually set up for the O3 air unit. Uh, this was a, the regular version. It does came uh, with the side plates for your camera mount, but 
in this version you could not use a dji o3 camera on it because uh, the side plate was just too tight for the dji o3 so what i end up doing is i end up getting uh, those aftermarket side plates they also made by impulse and i'm not really sure what kind of material they made of it is not metal it seemed to be some kind of molded plastic and surprisingly uh this thing actually worked pretty good let me get some more light on it because if you look at it uh most new frame that are designed for the o3 usually have some kind of silicon insert on it uh this does not have the silicon insert it's just using uh this material that's i don't know uh, some kind of plastic and i have to say it actually worked pretty good uh, as i said earlier i'm able to use my dji o3 with rocksteady and i'm not getting any kind of wobble in a recording so that worked pretty good i would say if you have one of the non-evo apex uh, you are thinking about going uh the dji o3 way uh, you can get those adapter i got those on get fpv and i would say they actually work pretty fun another drawback of using the apex body is that you actually kind of limited on the size of battery you can use on this long range drone as we all know a uh, big thing about long range is flat time but with them using the apex body you kind of limited on what kind of battery you can use and so far uh, the biggest battery i was able to use on this drone are uh, those and uh, this is a 6s 1800 milliamp and of course with the gopro mount you can see it is pretty much the biggest you can go and by the way this is what uh scorpion uh, batteries i would say the better option is to use a lion pack uh this is actually a 4000 milliamp now uh, you see the lion pack seem to be feeling a little better and of course the lyro pack give you a lot more fly time as long as you manage your throttle uh with this pack and the gopro on i get about i get about 25 minutes fly time and uh, with this guy i usually get about i say maybe 12 to 13 so a lot more flat time on the lion pack now another drawback i need to bring to your attention and uh, uh, this is especially if you are a new builder you know the experienced builder and that always been an issue with apex frame is that you don't really have a lot of real estate uh for your electronic and i'm saying that just like comparing it to my aos 7 which give you a lot of space for your electronic uh, on this build you really don't have that much space uh, it can be done the apex is very popular frame people build it but if you're a new builder you're gonna really have to take into consideration are you gonna be placing your electronic now i know so far i kind of sound a little negative about this frame that's just me showing you some of the issue you may have with the frame but overall this is a pretty pretty good frame uh it fly great uh talking about flying let's just go ahead and put some blade on and put a battery take it out for a spin and hopefully we should not be having any issues you know folks so just plug in the battery about 10 seconds ago and we got light on the gps let's see how long it's gonna take it to get any satellite usually it's a gps work pretty fine it is the one made by metek and i'll put the name of the gps on the screen but while we're waiting i'm gonna go over my setup on express lrs i don't know if you'll be able to see that there is a glare here we go so for long range i fly at 150 packet rate and the power i use with express lrs 2.4 is actually 50 milliwatts that may seem to be low for some of you guys but actually for long range flying that is plenty enough and even for freestyle so that's what our flies are 50 milliwatts all right guys so it's been a little bit over two minutes and try to get a good angle so you can see so i got six satellites i have sat lock set to be at eight sats but i said it took about two minutes that was a cold start a little longer than usually take 
but the good thing is the GPS still working because we're getting set. Now I'm gonna stop around here. That's on the other side of my house. And the DJ I usually have a little bit of hard time on this side, uh, just because of Wi-Fi and all the other interference we have in the house. And let's see here. We're getting about 24, 23, low 20s bit rate. So that is expected, I would say. So far, performance-wise, the O3 is doing fine. And my link quality is holding on pretty good. I'm not gonna go too far because as I'm concerned, this is pretty much a savage drone. So don't really trust it, it's gonna be something I'm gonna be just checking and see how the performance goes for the next couple of flights. But so far, all three units seem to be performing fine. What's wrong with my white balance? I think I may have the wrong white balance set up on because it's pretty bright. Oh yeah, my white balance suck. I may have to switch to the DVR recording. So right now, can I get an idea of how I am for myself? You can get an idea, it's about a thousand feet away from where I took off. Now one thing that is kind of interesting about this particular frame, the geometry, oh there's a car coming, let me get out of the way. The geometry of this frame according to Impost RC, it is like a modify. Right. Watch both sides before we cross the road. It is like a modify dead cat. Now, even though it is a modified dead cat, it's kind of interesting because, as you can see on the screen, your prop are still visible, which is kind of defeat the point of being a dead cat. But according to what Impulse RC say, it's more like a mix of dead cards and X configuration. So uh, this is where the crash happened. This is where I ended up landing. That's the way where I ended up landing. I'll try to show you exactly where I was. It was about where my little aero sun is. That's where I ended up crashing. And that's where the drone ended up getting in the water. But after two weeks of rice treatment, it seemed to be working pretty good. Uh, LQ receiver seemed to be fine. And my AQ is literally 100. Now, if, even though I have it at 50 milliwatts, as you can see, the LQ is not dropping. As I say, 50 milliwatts is actually plenty enough for most flights. It, either be 50, either be freestyle or and uh, long range this is another spot where the dj kind of struggle and no problem at all now i've been getting this message and this is the only drone where i get this message i don't know if it has to do with the flight controller overheating or if it has to do with the o3 overheating but yeah, this has nothing to do with uh, the water issue. Uh, this has been going on even before I got the drone in the water. And usually that happens when I kind of fly slow. But as you can see, when I try to go faster, when I go faster, the airflow literally cool down whatever is overheating. I'm not really trying to go over the canopies because in case something happened, but I would say so far, uh, this drone's actually performing fun.
I don't know what in the world I did with my white balance. It's supposed to be on auto, but clearly you can see I'm getting some overexposure. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to check to see afterward if I change the setting, but I should not have messed with it. But we're clearly getting some overexposure right there. You can see that. Uh, let's see how long we've been flying. About five minutes. Yeah, I'm getting some overexposure. I'm gonna have to check. I'll put on a note because I cannot find out why nonsense I'm flying, but I'll put a little note to let you know guys if what the setting on my white balance is. But yeah, I would say it is performing as expected. For a salvage drone, it is performing pretty well. And let's see what the speed I'm doing. 25 miles an hour now usually when I fly I go much slower and this is a pretty light 7 inch compared to let's say my AOS 07 and the weight currently because I got a GoPro on top and I got the Lion I think it's like 1100 gram so it's slightly a little bit over one kilo and with the 1800 lapo that I showed you earlier the weight is actually uh, less than one kilo so it is a very very light seven inch compared to my AOS 7 yeah I would say guys if you hand up crashing your drone in the water I'll say the best treatment is gonna be rice and let it sit I let this guy sit for about two weeks I think I could have got it, get away with one week but I was just being very careful I wanted to let it sit as long as I could because I didn't want to lose my DJ O3 I kind of thought I lost it but even though the O3 is technically not waterproof I don't even know if it's waterproof but I would say the rice kind of did a pretty good job on absorbing all the moisture and everything pretty much working fine GPS receiver O3 air units mm, flag controller is working fine the only thing I end up changing is the ESC but the ESC already had issues even before the crash so that is pretty good. One salvage drone. I hope guys you enjoyed this video. And make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I finally made it over a thousand subscribers. Even though for some reason, based on how many people watch my video, I can't say that a lot of you guys are not subscribed. But you just watch the video and that's fine. Whenever one of, one of those days you feel like subscribing, but if you like the video guys just make sure to hit the like button and let's see gps is up to 12 11. i usually get slightly more sat than that so except for that i mean this drone flying pretty good i will let you go guys and i will see you on the next one thank you for watching